That shit. All right, I was pretty pissed off before. I'm good now. I'm really good. I'm just kidding, I wasn't that bad. Excuse me, sir. Welcome to Build Biology. Yes, we're finishing cars here at Hoonigan. Yet another one. Today, it's Slay Poupon, AKA our Rolls Royce Silver Shadow. It's supercharged, Hemi powered, four seat, tube chassis, all the things. We're pretty proud of it. Welcome, sirs. Welcome. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Hey, welcome pleasure to being uh, here. Welcome to Build Biology. What did, what did you guys bring here? What's your name, first of all? Uh, my name is Alex Grimm. Soupy. <laughs> just Soupy. Yeah, just Soupy. Soupy and Alex built this 1978 Rolls Royce Silver Shadow. Oh, I should say we. We built it. That's always the line, right? <laughs> I mean, we, we is a very loose term at Hoonigan. We is yes. a very accurate term here at Hoonigan. <laughs> But we teamed up with Borla Exhaust. There's a really cool story you could check out on the series. But in short, Borla started out by making exhausts for Rolls Royces. We teamed up with them. We decided to do this build, a four-door, four-seater party car powered by a Hellcat motor. Even before that, it started as a build that we did for a Discovery Channel pilot. Watch the series. Cost I mean, look at this thing. It's, it's actually pretty sick. Starting just from looking at this thing, we got the two-tone wrap job from our friends at 360 Wraps. We got gloss here, we got vinyl up top. Okay. But really, I think okay. what everybody wants to see right off the bat. We should take a look oh. under the hood. You wanna let's just see, get right into let's it? Let's see the party piece, All let's right. see the party piece. All right. It's crazy to see this thing in this scenario. This car has been holed up in our secret build studio, AKA Area 69, but now it's out here in the wild. And so let's start out with just the basics, the party piece itself, what's the motor, and what's on top of it? Shit, what how many liters is it? 6.2? It's, <laughs> it's a 6.2. It's, it's a Gen 6 .2. 3 Hemi, 6.2 liters out of a Hellcat. So we put a Hellcat motor into a Rolls Royce. But we didn't just put a regular Hellcat. We added a Magnuson supercharger. We took off the stock unit and upgraded to a Magnuson. So how much more power does that make now over a stock? Because a stock Hellcat is around 700 horsepower. It's 707, please Seven, 707 horsepower. It's, with the Magnuson, it should put us somewhere between 850, 900. Yeah. Let's talk about this packaging. I mean, this is insane. Looking down just at this whole situation, I don't really see anything old Rolls Royce. Now I know we'll, we'll get into the whole chassis stuff later, but just to mount this thing, what did that take? What did you guys have to do? So we had our original Art Morrison chassis, which gave us a great base to build pretty much everything off of because it was essentially two rectangular frames. They were very nice and even, nice and square. So I could draw that up in CAD, then I could make the engine mounts before we even had the engine in the car. So basically I had the engine mounts made, installed them on the engine, welded the tabs onto the frame, and then we just dropped it in, bolted it up, and then built the chassis. Easy as that. We so made. all the custom engine accessories you see here, that's not bought. That's not bought. All this stuff is one off. Like, what, what, what am I looking at? Over this? There? What is that? That right there, that's the water tank for the 
water to air heat exchanger for the intercooler for the, oh, for the supercharger. Okay, so yeah. for the supercharger instead mm -hmm. of a traditional intercooler, yeah. we got water to air. And even the, the overflow tank the overflow on the radiator. Tank, yes. yeah. What are we running for radiator? Well, actually we're running three radiators. We know this is gonna be used heavily. No one ever cools anything down. And even the stock Hellcat's got to like more than one radiator. I'm okay. not exactly sure how many. So we have one big one in the middle, which is kind of like a generic off the shelf part store stuff. And then we have two on the side, which actually came from CSF. They were made and designed for drag race Hondas. They're good heat exchangers, and but we're using two of them, supplementing the big radiator. So those two guys on the outside are helping that one in the middle. Yeah. Just because these two dudes know exactly how we drive these cars. Yeah. And this car is destined for a Burnyard tour, but we'll get into that a little later. Yeah. So what about this cooler I'm seeing down at the bottom? That is also a radiator that came from a drag race Honda, and we're using that as a heat exchanger for the intercooler. Oh, so okay, so that's your air to water. Yeah, that's our air to water exchanger. So basically you have your tank here that holds all the water for the intercooler system, and then that goes into the cooler, then it goes from the cooler into the supercharger, and then from the supercharger it goes back into the water tank and that's cooling our whole supercharger and intercooler system. And then one of my favorite little tributes to the Hellcat, the left headlight does have a mesh screen to force air into, into that. Yeah. Who knows if it actually works? Do we, have we tested it? it, it, it yeah, there's air science comes behind through, it. Yeah, air air comes goes through. in, it makes around 900 horsepower. So to handle all that, what's behind it? What, what kind of transmission do we have set up? It was a Mopar, yeah. a performance clutch. And the a T56. But with the stock Mopar clutch. With a stock Mopar clutch. Wow. And so now while we're in the engine bay still, we talked about custom Art Morrison chassis, subframes, everything. That includes suspension too. But you guys had to build this tube frame on the front, right? Yeah. Yes. We actually had to build most of the, the frame structure here. If you watch the episode, we gutted this thing. This was an RC car body that we kind of dropped over a frame that we measured and made. Anything you see in here that holds the body up or holds anything up in the car, we had to make. What's the rear end? The rear end is a strange differential. It's basically the best rear end you can buy, direct bolt-in for a fifth gen Camaro because the rear end is actually a fifth gen Camaro. I love Camaro. Oh. So what you guys may not know, is that Alex Grimm here has a lot of history in building Camaros. Mm. Soupy has a lot of history in building Hondas. You must have been on the back of this thing. You must have been on the front, because we got <laughs> all Honda radiator parts up front, all Camaro stuff in the back. I see, I see you how, see how that works. works. Yeah, I see how that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, and the wheelbase is even the exact same length as a fifth gen Camaro. 120 inches exactly. We'll cut Coincidence? That part out. We'll cut uh, that part out. I think not. I work with a bunch of nerds. So once we got the exhaust set to here, we actually sent this car to Borla for them to make us a custom exhaust. And they made like the craziest looking thing. I think it was, you said it was called the Crossfire? It's called the Crossfire. The Crossfire exhaust. Wrong! So it's sound tuned, wild design. They made sure the packaging worked with everything we had in here. And they even gave us three different sets of exhaust tips to change the sound to what we might want it to be. Maybe even based off where we are which is kind of rad. This is probably one of my favorite pieces on the car. Obviously, a little bit biased, but our friends at Rotiform made us a custom set of LHRM wheels sized specifically for this car. We went with gold because, I mean, the car is white. You got to have gold. You got to have there. some gold in a Rolls Royce, right? Exactly. Ride height tuned by our friend Hurt, who just texted me before the car came over here. You look pained about that. Yeah, because Hurt likes to ride everything right on the ground, and then that happens. <laughs> but no, I, I think this set of wheels, like, it, it feels right. The color is on point, and it kind of feeds into everything else. You know, we got the polished lip, and what I really like what you guys did is we kept a lot of the chrome, yep. you know, the bright yep. work up front. Gotta have the original grill. Yes. Is that cleaned up? Or that, is that... Is a, that is all original bright work in this car. All we did was just clean it up a little bit. But those aren't original bumpers though. Oh, that is Mr. <laughs> yeah, there he goes. There you go. That yeah, guy right there. Right there. I that. Okay. Get out of the way. Can, can you please? So with the way that we built this car, the old school bumpers, especially the US spec ones, they just stick out super far ahead of the car. They weigh like what? 100 plus pounds. It just yes. didn't look right. It didn't do the car justice. So our man Alex Grimm, 
Of Tell course. us about what you put together. Oh my God, what can I say? You know, the stock bumper with the impact bars and all that, it did weigh a lot. It was very ugly, it was horrendous. So we got rid of that and I built this bumper. And you know what, you see these grills here? You see those grills? You remember we <laughs> mentioned we got three radiators in here? Yeah. These are functional scoops that scoop air into all three of our radiators. And what kind of blew my mind, this is aluminum. Right? That's and, and you welded all these separate panels. These are all welds here. Yes. And Grim spent days? No, not days. <laughs> okay, okay. It took me two days to make the bumper. This is three pieces. Actually, it's five pieces. So you got a top, you got a middle, you got a bottom, and then you have the sides as well. Because we have a strange contour here. It contours down and in. So you have to shape that. Super impressive. And the whole bumper is one piece, right? Yes, the whole bumper is one piece, bolts to the body, end of the grill. And then, um, yeah, like I said, and we have bumper. the same treatment on the bumperettes in the back, yes. just on each side. Bumperettes in the back. That Brian did. was adamant. He was very excited. He was very excited about the bumperettes. There you have and it. And the word bumperettes. <laughs> on the back, we have polished bumperettes, handcrafted by Alex Grimm right here. Handcrafted. Man. Going into this interior, the first thing that hits me is this insane contraption. What is this? I've seen a bunch of handbrakes in my life. That's got two cylinders and yes, four lines coming out of it. What's yeah. going on with that? Ron, that does a great observation. The purpose of this is we call it the yardstick. What it does is you push it forward, it locks up the front brakes, and then you pull it back and you're locking up the rear brakes. So you guys can do your sitters, no problem. Don't even have to touch that brake pedal. You can go straight into doing some drifting by pulling it backwards. It's an absolute masterpiece. I designed this in CAD, the whole thing from scratch, and it worked perfectly the first time. Whoa, whoa, whoa! There's the clutch. The brakes are good. They're great. So this thing we're calling the yardstick. I think it might be a first. So like they were saying, you push forward, it's like a line lock. It's just the front brakes. You pull back, it's like a traditional handbrake. What that lets us do, is just get really ignorant with this car in a burnyard. I think it's gonna lead to some really cool stuff. I think so. <laughs> I mean, it started as an idea that Brian had and Grim drew it up on CAD and we had it machined and we had it built. And now it's here with the wood handle. With the wood. <laughs> <laughs> wood. We decided to do the wood handles here and here and leave these the natural colors of wood. But if you look carefully, the rest of the dash is wood. The top of the door trims are wood. I didn't even notice that. We got wood and carbon we fiber have here. Wood, carbon fiber, and suede. Suede on the, is this an original door pull? It's an original door pull that we wow. modified. We've covered it with suede, and then we cut the pockets out of the carbon sheets. So the yardstick developed in-house by Alex Grimm. It's an idea that Scotto had. We're gonna test it out at a burn yard coming up. But what brakes are we running? We are running bare brakes up front, bare brakes in the back with the Hawk pads. Bare six piston front? Yeah, bare six piston front, bare six pistons in the rear. 13 inch rotors, Hawk pads. That's pretty serious. Yep. You do want us to be able to stop. That is- It's a, a lot of car to stop. Well. We don't want you guys to crash something that we spent so much time on. <laughs> I, got to, I got bad news for you. Yeah. Another thing that is kind of hard to ignore here, this interior is crazy. Like this trans tunnel you got going on here, mm -hmm. like I, I see now the tube chassis you got going because essentially the way this car started is an Art Morrison front subframe and all the suspension, Art Morrison rear, mm -hmm but there was nothing to join it in between because it's kind of a, a DIY kit. So what you guys had to do is essentially take these two subframes and build an entire car around that. So everything I'm seeing here, that's mm -hmm. all tied in to one major chassis. Yeah, so the cage is down to the, the main rails that are on this side. And this, we did the, the trans tunnel as a secondary chassis stiffener. So it's straight down the middle. Which is cool. If anybody saw this car at SEMA last year, we actually had it on the chassis jig that it was built on. Way less built than this, so you could see all of it. But the reaction was so great, and we kind of didn't want to hide that stuff. So we have carbon panels in between the tubes instead of just covering everything with sheet metal like you would traditionally. Well, the party piece on this car is, of course, that it's a four-door. 
So we had to figure out a way to get four seats in here. So we got ourselves two Sparco QRTRs. And look at this, like, you guys went to town on the seat bracket. I don't want to say overbuilt, because seats are really important to safety, but that's one of the things that people really notice going up to this car, is just the, the quality of craftsmanship well. going into that. So we got seats in the back as well, another set of Sparcos. The idea being is that this is our corporate ride-along sled. So we got our driver, we can put three passengers in here in any show, any kind of thing we do. Hell, even if you come to the burn yard someday, maybe you could get a ride in this thing. Maybe, probably not. Another thing that I'm noticing here is, this isn't just any kind of metal. You guys actually finished this in suede, the whole tunnel mm -hmm. all the way out back. And even behind the back seats, they're suede. And Grim was telling me, what, are you, what else do you have going on in the back? First off, we got the back, we got two fans built into the rear firewall that suck smoke that's gonna be produced in the car. It's gonna suck it outside, so that our nice corporate passengers, like you, are not gonna get smoked out. And not to mention so the center crazy. console, we got padding built in as an armrest underneath yeah. the suede. It's very comfortable, it's luxurious. It's a Rolls Royce. That's, that's actually padded. That's yeah. real, that's like, yeah. that's nicer than a lot of cars I own. Yeah. That's, you guys went through some serious detail. This is like Formula Burnyard. Formula Burnyard. Formula Burnyard. I like that. Is what this I is. I think we just Pull create... smoke out of the inside, comfort for the passengers, nice fit and finish, but does all the shreddy things. Yeah. All right, so wrapping out the back of this build, Grim, what are we looking at here? Obviously, we got a fuel cell, we got the rear end. We, we, we can actually see a lot yeah. going on here. Yeah, it's all open, easy to service. Of course, we got all our Holly components. We have our nice fuel fittings and our AN fittings. We got our nice line and we also have our fuel pump. We got our Holly regulator and our fuel filter. Now, I wanna say something nice to one of our friends that we're all, we're all very familiar with. Brian Scotto, he built the cradle Wait, no, that holds that thing. That's right, remember I do that? remember him building that, yeah. It's all painted now and it's yeah. integrated in yeah. here, but yeah. Brian's got some, some build yeah. in this. I made, a, I made a few improvements, but sure, sure. it was Structure. Brian 90% yes. of the way. Yeah, yeah. He did a great job. Bracket Brian, Thank you, Brian. Job. Thank you, Brian. So I see, you know, we have our tank breather right there. What's that, that mini breather we got going on? They're on top of the chassis. I know, this is fancy. Art Morrison gave us that for the differential. It's a breather for the diff. Yeah, so this is actually a really good view of the whole Art Morrison frame that kind of ties into the back. And the boiler exhaust, it does come out here and over into these crazy looking tips too. It's all tuned, it's all looking great. Isn't that nice? Man, this is a beautiful build. This is a beautiful you build. You guys did a good job. We did a job. So there you have it, our 1978 Rolls-Royce Slay Poupon Burnyard Party Car that these boys really put together. I mean. Thank you, sir. That's Thank a nice you. job, that's a nice job. Thank you. And of course, because it's a Hoonigan car, you'll probably see this thing on this versus that. It's gonna go on the road for a Burnyard tour. It's probably gonna do some stuff in the yard. And I don't know, we're gonna do our best to break it, so these guys have some more work to do. You're not gonna do that. I'm not. No, you're not. <laughs> Somebody else might. What are you talking about? That thing? Yeah. No, no, that's a little... That's a what? Looks like we... What do you call it? It's a happy accident. Oh, you Bob Ross now? Always. Because I'm an artist recognized by the people. Idiot.